You know, sometimes you just can't come up with something funny to say, and you just coming right out of the bait, out, out of the gates, shouting cunts. I, like, I, I the gate. only one that's fuzzing out? Yeah, you, 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 yeah, you got think like, Frank. Okay, so you guys can hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah, man, I can hear you just fine. I just wish I couldn't. Oh, it's going to get worse than that. Hey, oh, folks, it's Tuesday night. Fun. Welcome to 5 the big 5 and I've already been slammed. Uh, this is our 50th Between the Rolls. Uh, ha-ha, Federal Trade Commission. Uh, we beat your journey. Uh, you know the drill. Uh, follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube channel. Uh, if you want to buy cool merch, uh, it's... I think that away somewhere. I don't know. Tinyurl.com slash RPG swag. My bath mat will be here any day. So I'm thrilled about that. Uh, tonight, we're going to go ahead and continue with the improv session of our DMing tutorials. Uh, you recognize these two individuals here, uh, but we're going to introduce you to them anyway. Uh, we'll start with Scott. Scott, who are you? Uh, what do you got to say to start? Hi, I'm um, Scott. Um, <clears throat> I normally play a character called uh, Eric called Justice Man. I'm also a DM. Um, bit of a content creator, been a DM a long time. Um, I'll be uh, DMing at Gary Con this uh, March, at the end of March. And um, yeah, I like improv, but uh, I'm not really particularly good at it. You know, I, I kind of lose focus and get feeling lost and sketchy and uh, like I don't know what to do. So luckily I have people around me that help and guide and comfort me. The sense of a strong leader is identifying your weaknesses. Well, then I'm very sure. strong. <laughs> there you go. Well, we can't smell you from here, so you're okay. Uh, <laughs> next up, Blake. Blake, who are you and what do you got to say? Uh, I'm, I'm Blake. Uh, I'm the black private dick who's a sex mas machine to all the tricks. And uh, I'm one bad mother. You better hush your mouth because I'm just talking about Blake. Nice. That's the best you got tonight? No. I'm uh, saving it for later. Folks, uh, I'll give you a little insight here. At some point in time, uh, you might see uh, Emilio Estevez uh, moments uh, <laughs> via <laughs> Scott. Uh, <laughs> 50 episodes. Seriously, folks. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of it. Uh, and if you want to be a part of it here, uh, as you can tell, Kyle called off, so we all got lucky. You're welcome. It's a gift. Uh, but uh, if you want to have a seat here, have a seat on the table during the game. Give us a shout at M Hobo Inc. and let us know. Uh, tonight or this weekend's game is a one shot, so it's open to all. So if you've ever wanted to give a shot to be a dipshit without repercussions, uh, go ahead. You don't have to join Congress. You can uh, join us. Uh, let's go ahead and start off with a recap of this last Saturday's game, and that was the campaign. I believe I entitled it Escape. Uh, Blake, why don't you right. give the overview and I'll cover any of the finer points. Uh, we, we escaped, I think. So there's a lot to feather in for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, so, so effectively where we had last left off, uh, after successfully uh, 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 restoring uh, safety to Fink Mine with, with some, some delays, I, I think Taryn may have uh, uh, slain a character from Friends, I don't recall. Um, uh, we made it back to the Fink Town in order to uh, uh, collect our reward from the mine owner uh, to discover that there was a poker tournament going on, which I happened to win. Uh, but Perpetua is nowhere to be seen. Uh, all that we have seen is a- Who won? Who, who won? Anastasia Bibahausen. Oh, that's all right. Yes. You know, Great name. Yes, Anastasia as in Russian royalty and Bibahausen as in where do Beaver live in. <laughs> we are still for mature audiences. So we had we had picked up with uh, 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 the uh, the Lie Barbarian Kyle's character and uh, Taryn Carroll's character, uh, getting ready to face trial for uh, their misdeeds. Uh, Carroll had been led up to the magistrate. Kyle had slaughtered his cellmates, and 
was told he didn't actually have to see the magistrate today and he could just stay there for a minute. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> then he got his prison tattoo. Uh, well, that was before he <laughs> killed him. <laughs> but Carol. So that's know, what you call it nowadays prison tattoo. It, uh, it cost the life of every single person in his cell. I call it getting butt fucked, but. Uh, Carol, true to nature, though, has essentially implicated herself further by admitting that she has uh, was was responsible for getting this particular group of heroes together, uh, which was not going over so well. Um, it wasn't my fault. <laughs> we love you, Carol. It was your fault. <laughs> uh, I went to uh, I went to collect my winnings from the tournament. Uh, as I was doing so, uh, Jesse's. Uh, El- elephant, uh, the character by the name War of- Elephant. Yes, yes, his mount, his mount, his his, his girlfriend. Uh, began ra- began rampaging through the uh, center of town just as a, uh, I believe, the same blue dragon that we had encountered on our way back from Corvo Manor began doing flyovers, trying to uh, specifically hit the elephant. It appeared. I'm not speculating. That's that's a fact. That's how it appeared. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yes. Uh, me, during all of this confusion, uh, Ernie is trying to save his skin. He has gone to spy on the trial proceedings. He is a cat, uh, and he was essentially discovered, escaped as fog, was discovered again, was just trying to trying to save his ass, um, and. Manise was with him and somehow ended up in the cells and got knocked out with Dewey. <laughs> somehow. Oh, and, and what was the kicker? Oh, and oh yes, and, and he, he can no longer fly again. Oh, okay. Kyle had his character tell the ladies in the female cell to pluck the 16th wing or 16th feather on either side. Yes. So during oh, uh, his, his investigation. Uh, the gnomes that we had encountered at Torval Manor returned to jailbreak Dewey for some purpose uh, and elected to take uh, Manise, uh, Chris's character, with them. Uh, Chris, sensing an opportunity to escape after being led away partially and somehow revived through, through their mercy, uh, he took off through a hole that they had created in the town wall. Uh, Dewey ran away from them towards the magistrate, ran into Lucas. Lucas said it's on fire, so now they're headed back, back to the direction that Chris escaped from. Meanwhile, after I got my winnings, I went to go collect my weapons, discovered that someone has stolen the box, the mystical prison box, or it is perhaps misplaced, but I was unable to locate it amongst my uh, various and sundry items. I believe the word you're looking for is core of the fucking campaign is now missing. Oh, the Holy MacGuffin. Yes. Ah. I don't care. I snatched some other shiny shit out of there. I went, fed my dog, and now I just dimension road out of the uh, out of the fucking city. So I'm headed south. Heroes of the realm. <laughs> kind of hard to top that and there's really no need to i think he's accurately covered all the points um what to do what to do what to do with these four retards um i don't know Wait, tr- trigger warning trigger warning trigger warning yeah trigger warning uh the r word the l word the b word all the words that we aren't supposed to use i'll use uh but in reality uh this band of misfit heroes uh, has left the DM in a bit of a jam, uh, which is a perfect segue to the major section of this show's content, which is improv. Uh, For those of you who are not frequent viewers, um, you may not understand this. For those frequent viewers, you may be surprised at it. Most of the encounter areas that are for heroes and Carol uh, have encountered were never intended to be a part of the campaign. And I have had to pull shit out of my ass. Um, oh, that, that's why you were minding your mouth. That's, that's right. But then you can't hear me talk. My melodic voice would be interrupted. 
like that cat yowling. Um, <clears throat> but uh, Scott, you did not get the opportunity to see it because you don't love us, and that's okay. We understand. Oh, no, that. Yeah. He, he had the opportunity. He elected not to. <laughs> he was probably the smart one of the group. Uh, it is a good show. Uh, it's an excellent show for DMs who are puzzled as to how to deal with characters in different spots. Because as we all know, the cardinal gothic unbreakable rule in D&D is never oh, split, split the party. the party. Oh, I was going to say, if they can fuck it up, they will. Yes, and these A-word assholes do it on a constant freaking basis. Um, so if you're a DM that struggles with that, I, I would go ahead and suggest looking at it to see how uh, cutaway scenes will save your ass. And we're gonna, we're about to cover that. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. And 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 he, even though he is stroking his own ego, he did do a fantastic job. I, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I will, I will always say, I, I'm not a better DM than anyone else. I just have a bigger breadth of experience to pull from, uh, because even old fuckers like myself and Scott. No offense, Scott, you're old. Uh, can go I'm ahead and, and and suck at DMing. And trust me, I have my moments. Uh, I'm sure Scott has his moments. I'm mm -hmm. sure Blake has his moments. We all have our moments. So if you have a bad session and you just think maybe I shouldn't be the DM, uh, give it another session or two. Because, you know, everybody gets into a funk. Uh, but after three, forget it. Yeah, you know, after three, you suck. Three. You should just give yeah, up the you hobby. actually do suck. You Take up, give like, it up lacrosse or something. I don't know. Fortnite. <laughs> Take up, Fortnite. Yeah, take up Fortnite or Checkers because you take might up Fortnite and listen to Billie Eilish. Just <laughs> um, take Checkers still is too fantasy like it's got kings and stuff. No, take take up. That's that. true. That would trigger yeah, a lot of people. And I actually like Billie Eilish. So please, Miss Miss Eilish, don't take offense. Oh, yeah. I, I saw her on Ellen the other day. Oh, yes. Yes. So, because you're watching out there. Yes. I love, love of course. the latest track. I understand Billie down. Eilish and uh, Henry Cavill and, uh, you know. Uh, just a plethora of stars say, uh, fuck Critical Role. Those Murder Hobo Inc., man. I, I can get into that shit because those guys were real. <laughs> yeah, we're real something. Uh, but yeah. yeah. So uh, if you've been following along, we've been doing a lot of DM tips here recently. Right. Especially when it uh, pertains to uh, various and sundry forms, not to be confused with geek and sundry. Uh, styles of play and styles of development we have had some really great shows uh including the ones i haven't been in which are probably the best uh ones that we've done M murder of the doge except for murder of the doge which is the single greatest show that you'll ever see uh i suggest you just keep it uh you know when you open up your browser to look at porn i think that should just be your home page well, well, well no it should be part of your evening devotionals <laughs> and boots uh <laughs> Uh, yeah. You weren't in boots, though, right? Like, no, but that also. That's, see, that's why it's just a smidge above Doge. <laughs> but uh, tonight we're going to go ahead and discuss uh, improv uh, because improvisation is a major tool in every DM's uh, toolbox. It's not something that comes easy, it's something that you can learn, uh, but it has to be, in my opinion, it has to be a skill that you develop on your own and it just takes a shit ton of practice now uh all three of us are dms and all three of us have the i'll say blessedness of dming murder hobos completely off the wall off the hook uh they don't follow a line they don't follow a course of action there's no reasonableness and when you deal with those you get really good at improv because Either that yeah, or it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I, uh, I'm not, uh, I, 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 I can see it from here. You have shit show written down. <laughs> Actually, uh, 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 Blake is correct. Shit show. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but yeah, being with murder hobos, you learn to think on your feet fast and furious. If you have a campaign of, normal heroes who just want to go out and be heroes uh maybe you don't need that 
if you have a group, I, uh, I would I would argue that I would say that at some think? point it's going to be a skill that is going to at least be helpful at some point to an extent. Oh yeah, oh, uh, and, and I I you just have to work on it. So let's go ahead. Uh, since Blake and I have gotten to talk so long, we're going to turn it over to Scott and let him talk. Uh, not in his regulator voice yet, I don't think. Scott, what do you think? What are your uh, knee-jerk reactions on improv? Well, the the um, my knee-jerk reaction would be is that it, it it has to be something, as you said, that 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 you develop. I don't necessarily think that it has that that it. Um, <laughs> that it goes hand in hand with running murder hobos. I think that there's always a spark of creativity that can introduce itself into a very staid and stale campaign um, that you, that the DM decides to spice it up. But I agree with you in that you develop the skill set by just having to do it. And that's, that's probably the, the point is that you can improv at any time you learn to improv by having players go batshit crazy on you and you having to learn as a DM, having to learn how to adapt. Now, in my opinion, there's two ways things go off the rails. One is that the players are not following plot hooks. That's one thing, that they're not taking the lead. They're not taking the, the bait that you're trying to give them on, you know, what is the story that you're going to do? You know, you're in a bar and you hear about a quest and the guy's like, nope, we're going to sit right here and I'm going to, I'm going to, drink until I get drunk and start bar fights, you know. Hang on, hang on a second, Scott. Blake, are you writing this shit down? <laughs> drive you fuckers to it. Too. Okay, go ahead. Oh, I, I was, was going to say, I'm like, I, I, so we need, so we need to start bar fights. That's what we're supposed to do. <laughs> At all that, that's what you got. That's one thing is that, you know, your players not picking up plot hooks. The, the second part is that you as a DM notice that for whatever reason, the players have become disengaged from what they have followed the plot hook, but they're just not, they're just not feeling it. You're not feeling it. And some, something has to be interjected. Something has to be done to liven something up. The campaign has gotten boring. The session has gotten boring for, you know, whatever it is. And people are, and you're feeling your players are being burnt out. Um, how do you introduce something to get, uh, to, to, to bring, to bring an agency back to your, back to your player? So that, the, in my opinion, those are the two times it's useful, but I agree with Frank in that you learn how to do it by things just falling apart and the DM has to learn how to adapt. That's my knee-jerk reaction. Cool beans. Blake, knee-jerk reaction. I will interject and say that, no, Scott, your knee-jerk reaction is to be a chicken fucker. <laughs> I'm just eating chicken. It's just there, <laughs> running around. It's kind of sexy. To you the know? nuns, no less. To yeah, the nuns. <laughs> but 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 no. There's there's the old vaudeville joke. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, man. Practice. It's, practice. It's practice. Something. The only way that you can develop something like that. Right. That's it. That's your words of wisdom. <laughs> No, I, no, I, was, I was just practice. Thank you very much. Hey, have a great night. See you on set. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just putting in my two cents. I was letting. I was going to let you go. Oh no! I go ahead. No, I no, mean, by all means, after you. <clears throat> well, I've already covered the fact that I, I think it's practice. And again, any any thought we throw out here is, of course, our own opinion. Uh, feel free to object. Feel free to disagree. Feel free to yeah, agree. You're, you're but you know what? Well, go ahead and well, listen. Opinion. Yeah, maybe we give you some good advice. Maybe we don't. With improv, uh, I, I like doing it. I like it when my players are obstinate and, for lack of a better term, uh, not very dependable uh, because it allows me to go ahead and uh, hone uh, the, the limited amount of skill sets that I have to go ahead and think on my feet. Now, being an old timer uh, and having already told you, I just have a, a bigger well to draw from the thing about it is i have run a lot of adventures over the years so i can always try and do a pigeonhole where okay these guys are headed into a sandy desert tomb mummy giant scorpion purple worm blah 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 if they decide to go into the woods fuck those guys they're getting giants 
giants and cyclops and uh, bears. Oh my. Um, but that allows me to say, okay, you know, three years ago when I was uh, running through uh, Torgal Manor or whatever, uh, I did this and that seemed to work out real well. So we're going to have wear bores and I'm going to listen to these guys for 10 minutes discuss uh, menstruation issues. Uh, but I know it'll kill 10 minutes, so I know I'll be fine. Uh, but that is, <clears throat> that is part of my point in, okay, I've had this experience. We're headed into a similar situation. I can steal my ideas. Uh, and don't be afraid to steal your ideas or someone else's. Hey, I saw Matt Mercer do this. Da -da 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 -da. If it works in your campaign, if your players are having a good time, if you're enjoying it, improv the shit out of it. And you know what? Just to make sure that they are paying attention, flip the script on them. Uh, oh, hey, you know, I watch Critical Role too. Da -da -da -da. Oh, well, you know, when he did this, well, fuck you, we're doing the opposite. Right. Uh, and that is how you correctly use stolen material. Uh, it's, it's, your, it's inspiration and homage. Yes. Uh, don't be afraid to steal from pop culture or oh, yeah. your buddy. Uh, if, if I'm playing in Blake's campaign and he does something cool, fuck that shit. I'm writing that shit down. Scott's <laughs> idea about the map being outside. Oh, hell, fuck yeah, I'm, I'm stealing that idea. Uh, don't don't be afraid. And play it off in your down times, uh, you know, before you start your game, we call it green room. Shoot the shit, talk it over. Well, I would have done it this way. I would have done it this way. I would have done it this way. Hey, you know what? In about three months, I'm taking your advice and we're going to do it that way. Uh -huh. uh, don't be afraid to beg, borrow, and steal. Th those are the key uh, ingredients to a good improv. I know and, that it works because it worked there. And I, I would only add one more thing is that um, I, I would <laughs> I would not shy away from and what you just said there a minute ago, Frank. And I think uh, I think that Kyle has mentioned this as well. Um, and Blake, I, I think you maybe as well is that you know having a couple of I don't want to call them pre-packaged, but but at least some some random encounters, you know, more or less ready to go. Used to have a concept in um, in A D and D in first edition, second edition of of wandering monsters, and it was even done into the play style to where you know one turn past you roll for wandering monsters, and this was just the idea that you're in a you're in a dungeon, you're in some underground area, and there could always be danger lurking around the next corner. Um, so you had to have these pre-packaged encounters kind of rolled up and ready to go. What you said, if you're in the desert, you know, you have these. If you're in a forest, you have these. Some of that comes from your own lore that you know, from what you've read, from books you've read, from movies you've seen. Frank, what you're saying about don't be afraid pulling from pop culture. Um, you don't be afraid pulling from other ideas. Those are all, you know, things that you have. And don't be afraid, since I haven't seen a module yet, right now in the fifth edition that's been put out by Wizards of the Coast that actually had quote unquote wandering monsters. I haven't seen a table that you roll and say, you know, one is bugbear, three is a group of hobgoblins, you know, five is, you know, I haven't seen that yet. Maybe I haven't bought them all yet, but but I haven't seen it. Still don't be afraid to have a couple of those in your in your armory, in your quiver and and um and know when to try to pull them out. Well and just because something like that doesn't already exist don't be afraid to try and create one for yourself. Right. Go ahead and expound on that. I didn't want to because I was going to talk about something else. All right. Well, well then talk, talk about but, something but, else. But, but, but no, I, I will say uh, if, if you do want some ideas for that, uh, if you know just general biomes where you're going to be at, take a look through your monster manual, take a look through there and come up with, okay, here's 10, 15, well, not 15, we don't have D15, so here's 10, 20 options. If you're, so roll, they don't all have to be monsters. Some of them can be, okay, now it starts to rain. Uh, now now here's a traitor. Here's a what, whatever. But you can, depending on your biome, you can pre-plan pre to not be planned. Right. Uh, but, 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 but getting back a little bit more directly to the nature of, of, of the art, uh, one of the things that they always do teach you is to never terminate the, the dialogue to because if, if all you're getting from your players is no no 
we're going here. Try and try and ask leading questions uh, to try and mm. uh, in, encourage engagement because uh, that will make for a much more natural conversation because while you're talking with filler words, you're vamping in your head trying to come up with, okay, what am I actually trying to accomplish here? Yeah, and and I would I would follow up with that, Blake, is that a DM can ask one of can ask a question, um, you know, do you want to do this? And then that see that's a binary yes or no. And whereas mm -hmm. you could instead as a DM spend time describing a situation and then describing the environment and you know, use whatever creative, you know, language you want to. Um, you know, I know Matt Mercer has made a living out of, you know, literally made a living at having a group of voice actors act these things, right? And that's what makes part of that show as compelling as it is, is that they draw people in and then they use voices, they use improv, impersonation, whatever you want to call it, to be able to try to create the mood. So ask the question, what would you like to do? And, you know, instead of, do you want to go here? That, that, that's the, just following what you said, Blake, is that, you know, don't, you know, keep it more of a dialogue and keep it more descriptive. That mm -hmm. allows everyone to enter into, into, into a more creative state where improv can, can flourish uh, instead of binary situation where people are electing very narrow yes or no decisions. Yeah, absolutely. And, and also a follow up again from sources to draw from. Uh, we, we do it here all the time. You can bring back characters for people that aren't at your table. If the you rock, need, baby, if, the brick. Yeah, <laughs> NPC. Oh, I, I, I'm going to a church and I kind of need this person to be an asshole. Oh, I bet Prudence might just be at that church. It, it, it gives you a, 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 an already established personality, uh, an already established character, a role, uh, someone that could be at least developed in your environment. So don't be afraid to even use old P old PCs, retired PCs. Uh, bring back anything that you need to. But um, ooh, you see, 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 you just gave me an idea bring back a PC that had died in one of my campaigns, I'm going to bring him back as a vampire. See, and that's, that's not, Just like that, not, folks. Not, not, not to necessarily suggest that's the oldest trick in the book, because the oldest trick in the book uh, well, well, yeah, was performed on the docks, but <laughs> by the bay. But, uh, All right, folks, Otis Redding, he's the oldest trick in the book. Yeah, he is. It was performed, not did perform. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Sorry. Gotta have music. Music sets the mood. Oh, yeah. No, not gonna be. That's why it's called the skin flute. The crowd. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and I, I'm in total agreement on that. Uh, many a time, I, I mean, I, if you watch any of the shows, you know I'm yanking shit out of the 70s and 80s. Uh, you know, you All the time. Dwayne, yeah, Dwayne the Brick Johnson uh you know you've got the stoner bill and ted i mean that is something that at least with most of our cast they can readily identify with it and they will go ahead and formulate what the hell they're doing uh so you can get bill and ted but then the next guy's john wick so you just see this progression of the actor and it's like holy shit everybody in cathaway is the same person and it's like no they aren't they're all assholes, but you know, it's not that bad, but yeah, anytime you do that, never be afraid to pull in prudence or Eric call justice man or right. uh, Ryan's total paladin that we had fun spinning around on his shelf. Uh, those are all character. And that's the best thing about murder hobo is uh, it's a one shot. We don't give a shit. Uh, you know, if you want to use Eric Hall Justice Man, use him. If you want to use Headwood Larry, use him. Perpetual user. Doesn't matter. Uh, use those if you're familiar with it. Uh, it, it I would also interject if you're, if you're familiar enough with the player who developed it, because some people do take their creations a little, a little, uh, uh, what's the word I want to look for? A little extreme a little, a little too a little too too hard if you if you were to act out of character they would take umbrage 
I know, I know that those people exist. Yeah, they, 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 they do exist within our ecosystem. Right, Frank, I, I had a quick question for you. How often do you use randomness as in, you know, just rolling a dice roll whenever you, whenever you need to improv? And also I would, I would ask Blake whenever, it, I would ask you the same question. How much do you allow a random element to enter into the improvisational act? In an urban environment, urban setting, any villages, all the time, you are most likely to get hit with urine or feces from a chamber pot being emptied as you are to see foghorn leghorn walking down the street. In, uh, I won't say can scenarios, but in wilderness or dungeon scenarios, I will rely heavily on relatives of the weaker monsters so if mm. uh the campaign goes out and they kill all those hobgoblin people and then they go to simon's hollow which who the fuck gives a shit about this i didn't prepare jack shit from it but then i'm like okay well you just killed a bunch of hobgoblins i'm gonna say the hobgoblins were friendly because i really didn't want to kick the shit out of kyle to start so they weren't really into it now you're in simon's hollow hey guess what it's a cohesive uh, existence between the demi-humans and the humans and the uh, humanoids. So there were a half a dozen female half-orcs in there, or hobgoblins rather, and that really threw the party for a loop because now it's like, oh, our menfolk are out there, and it's like, Ugh. especially Ernie. I thought well, Ernie well, was- And even when you describe it that way, I, I remember that particular instance. My first thought was yeah. this village of undead. Undead, really? <laughs> because you said that they looked unusual. As we well, approach. yeah, uh, and that, I remember and that. Yeah, and that's one of those things where uh, if you are intentionally vague, you can pick up murder of the Doge. You can pick up on what the players are thinking, and that will assist you with the direction to run. Murder of the Doge. Uh, Ernie starts talking to these guys. Blake pops up. Hey, we don't know if these guys are good or not. It's like. Uh, we do now. <laughs> so if you pick up on your players' fears, concerns, or opinions, you can interject those back in. And I don't want to belittle it, but it gives the player a sense of, I was right. I knew it. I'm invested in this. This is awesome. When in reality, it's, you have a big mouth and I ran with it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great because it worked. I I had a blast. Blake had a blast. Ernie had a blast. Everybody had a good time. Uh, you got to watch Murder of the Doge. But with that, uh, it was an urban environment. But I had a sheet of uh, not foes per se. It was like a flow chart essentially, yeah. Yeah. and it it is a mess. <laughs> I don't think I published that one yet. It uh, it allowed for Scott if if you never watched it didn't know anything about the show you could pick it up and you could say okay well i want this one to be guilty so i need three red herrings four clues da, 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 right. and i have this span of uh npcs to choose from um so urban settings i always do it uh, and i have half a dozen charts that i use in wilderness or dungeon adventures i usually focus in on the meek and mild because they're the ones that are going to be doing grunt work, delivering message, fetching water, stuff like that. I don't want to say, Oh, well, your big bad guy here is a type three demon. Oh, Hey, random event chart type three demon. Uh, it's his right. brother. <laughs> so. Well, well, I, I, and, and even along that, that, that note too, like I, I always remember saying, I'm like, okay, we're in a, we're in a public building. Where is, where's the clerk? I want to go talk to who is emptying chamber pots. I want to go list. I want to go talk to. I, I don't want to talk to the magistrate. I want to talk to the, the, the stenographer that just listens to everything. Grunts like, know oh. what's going on. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, okay, so I'll, I'll I'll give you all an example of uh, of um, of because um, I, I I was thinking about this um, whenever the word came out that we were doing improv. <laughs> I, I have a campaign that I run um, and I, I noticed that, you know, that the party plowed through, you know, I had this enormous labyrinth built, enormous labyrinth. 
uh, and they plowed through the first, you know, encounter in like, you know, two rounds. And then I could not, you know, envision the party spending the next three sessions wandering around in an empty labyrinth. <laughs> so, so I had to, I had to refill it full of other stuff. And um, I, I kind of used what, uh, what you guys were saying, um, looking at, um, you know, what are, you know, what's the environment that I'm in? And I thought, okay, a, a labyrinth is a constructed, you know, place. Uh, so I'm going to have, I'm going to have a bunch of constructs in there, right? This labyrinth was created. Um, and then, so I'm going to have a bunch of constructs in there. And then I thought, well, where is this, where is this labyrinth coming from? And then I created a whole new big bad and a whole new boss fight at the very end and decided, well, a labyrinth is kind of a prison. And this is where I think we were saying earlier, you need to have some lore and you need to have sources that you can draw on. You, you know, you do need to go out and read. You need to read Greek mythology. You need to read Norse mythology, uh, Mel um, you know, Roman, what everyone is saying. A Bible, back, a Quran, you're, 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 the Bible, the Quran, the Quran, exactly. Where you, you need to read these things uh, and and get some inspiration from. And I decided, well, you know, a labyrinth is kind of like a prison. So what's the prison playing? Carceri, who are you know who are the inhabitants of Carceri, the Demodans? So I decided to put a chateau <laughs> as the big boss at the very end. And then I decided to make it a chateau that they had ran into a year and a half before, but had gotten away. So, so now they're now in a boss battle with a prior enemy and the whole campaign arc is kind of shifted a little bit because I just noticed that the players were going to be bored for the next five sessions if I didn't do something. And that's a good example of just no, no. improv and pulling something out. Yeah. Now, Scott, what I'm curious about is how long did that chain of thought take you to navigate? Well, I'm a fucking genius, so about 15 seconds. No, I'm kidding. No, um, it, no, no I, in honesty, I tortured about it for a good long time. I really, really did. That, that took me a while. I had to go and um, decide to look at what are all the typical type of creatures that you have. I changed the minotaurs to um, what's that one big demon that kind of looks like a, that, that kind of, it's not a Gabrette too. It's, um, well, it's another big Tom demon. Cruise fought. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it's one that looks like a, it's one that looks like a minotaur. Um, I, I forgot the name of it. Um, but, but I filled it full of those. I filled it full of a bunch of like steampunk type of, you know, um, uh, engines, a uh, bunch of, you know, spinning blades and stuff like that. I made amulets of recall and it ended up probably taking me about a weekend to basically re-engineer the entire labyrinth. But I realized it took me 15 seconds to realize I was in trouble. Okay. It took me to realize I was going to be in trouble if I didn't do something else that the next four or five sessions were going to be crap. So I think early recognition and realizing that you need to do something. But after that, it did take some time to go in and, and, and re-engineer, well, uh, you know, I how guess, you're going to do things more keeping in tune with the imp improv aspect of what we're talking about. How did you, did you implement any, uh, I, I want to say path changes during your session? I did. I did actually, um, talking about splitting the party. I, uh, I took an example of how they were going to get out and I changed it from basically getting to the end point and then being teleported back for each creature they ran into had a necklace and the minute they touched it they were transported back to where they were and then they had to rewalk back into the room in order to get transported back to the rest of the party so if they didn't find some way to mage hand these these little necklaces into into a bag of holding or something like that then they were going to end up splitting themselves into all different areas um and then one of the best tricks happened in one of the or another little improv thing one of the players thought they were clever about casting etherealness in order to avoid the, uh, you know, to try to get a sneak attack on one of the, one of the monsters. However, I remembered that that carceri, and this is where I decided to make it carceri, um, and really do some research on it. Carceri is in the outer planes, and the ethereal plane does not touch the outer planes. 
So I went back into, you know, the manual planes, you have the inner planes, you have the elemental planes, then you have the outer planes. And Karsrai is indeed one of the outer planes. Thus, someone casts a theory on this and nothing happens. They just burnt a seventh level slot. So, and that, that came up, I was worried that, that that was going to, uh, that that was going to kind of screw up the end battle they have. But, uh, but I decided to look on it and enforce a rule that sometimes me as a demon, I'm kind of a DM, I'm kind of a pushover. Sometimes I decided to enforce the letter of the law. No, you cast this and no effect. But I didn't know I was going to do that until like at the last minute when I read the read the spell description in detail. Well, it, I, I would say it would have had an effect, but it wouldn't have had the desired effect. I just decided to just it just burns the spell. I thought about maybe expanding to where they did something or they attracted something or it didn't work out the way they wanted to. I just wanted because I didn't want them figuring out where they were. I just said you did it and nothing happened. Oh, oh that, so you were, you were you were saying that because they were on that, that they can only move to an adjacent plane and because they weren't adjacent to the ethereal plane. Right. They were not right. adjacent to the ethereal plane. Correct. Okay. But I, like I said, I, I was not I was not prepared for that, you know. Uh, I was not prepared for that for the whole party to go ethereal and be able to kill all kill all the monsters, like kill all the NPCs, uh, you know, and have them not being able to in essence fight back at all. That that would have messed me up even more, because <laughs> then I would have uh, wouldn't have known what to do. So uh, it, at that point, the rules kind of saved me, and um, I had to go back and figure out exactly where where Carcerai was in the whole planar you know scope of things, and uh, and it ended up working out. But uh, now it, it things you get curveballs thrown at you, and uh, and you do have to be able to react. But that but that was a fun one, and we're we're still in the middle of that fight, and the players are having a good time. Well, yeah, and that, that's the important aspect of that. Right. And I also cast Time Stop at the very start of it. So I have a bunch of little little things. I, I have like five actions that were taken. So I'll get to have, in essence, five more surprises, you know, that, 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 I, can, that I can pull up. Uh, the first one was whenever they tried to attack, um, they had already buffed themselves up where they were going to have a basically advantage. These guys are like, you know, all level 20th, you know, guys. They, all, they were going to get a, a, you know, advantage on every attack and I said well I'm having one where they get disadvantaged to where it's equalized down and that was a nice little shock for them and I have a few more little surprises as well sorry I've been talking too much no 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 it's uh, it, hearing some of that in, in practice is I think helpful for people uh, Frank you're silent yeah yeah Fra Frank your mic's off again how's that there we are. Okay. I, I guess my question is, and there's a reason I ask, did you already have that scenario written out and then the following scenario prepared? I had the scenario written out um, and just, this is a bit, bit of thing. They're going into um, lost caverns of the Sojacanth, greater caverns. There's a glittering grotto where they go in and it teleports to one of three areas. One of them is a labyrinth uh, to where there's a couple of minotaurs. I took that and ran with it into a different direction, but I didn't change the basic structure is that you have a minute, you have a, a party with only two NPCs in it and it's an enormous labyrinth. And, uh, so that is what I have planned out. I had them were going to get teleported here. They kill two minotaurs. I get teleported back. I re they killed the two minotaurs just like that. And they were intent on exploring the entire labyrinth. <laughs> Thinking okay. there was going to be some payoff at the end. I was like, I'm going to have to fill the next three sessions for them. You turn the next corner and don't see anything. You turn the next corner and don't see anything. You turn the next corner and don't see anything. Now, how did you, because as a player, okay, I know I fucked up somewhere, and now I'm horribly lost in Maze World. Oh, um, yeah. How did you go ahead and did you take that into account, or did you listen to them whine and bitch and piss and moan like players always do uh, and say, okay, how 
let's cut to the chase. How do we do this? Which which option did you go? With? I I had them basically since we're using fantasy grounds and there's a mapping application as part of it. I turned off that. Had uh, had the basically the mask go blank and um, I would give them glimpses of it uh, every couple of minutes as they would map some of it and they said you I, you have to stop map. Right. You have to stop and map and do something to where you're keeping a track of where you're at. And then I would give them visibility of the map for, you know, 30 seconds. And then I then I shut it down and then kick them off the map and say, which direction are you going? OK, we're going to the end of this corridor and then you're going to stop and map. And then I give them visibility again. And then uh, they can see where they've been, see where they're going, because they're drawing a map. In essence, I'm trying to recreate the idea of them stopping and taking a look at the map. And how how did that play out for them? It played out pretty well. It did kind of slow play up a little bit, but uh, but there's no way around it. If, if if you unless you want to do complete, you know, theater of the mind, um, and turn north, south, east, west, and then you know have them. And since we're doing this remotely, it's a little more difficult, a little more challenging. I decided to give them flashes of a map and ended up working, but I would have preferred it to be a little bit more dark, frankly, a little bit more mysterious. So well, go ahead, Blake. I was good. I would, I would ask you, you said it slowed the play down a little bit, but did anyone seem to complain? Because in that no. particular instance, it sounds like that work was, was working to your advantage because you were needing the time. Yeah, it, it, it ended up working out OK because it gave me some some chance to talk. I, I was able to, you know, like, uh, for instance, one of the uh, players is a wizard of, of a fairly, fairly high level. I think, you know, 24th because I, I wrote up at the 30. So he, he, he has he's 24th level. He's a very high level conjurer. So I ended up having the walls of the labyrinth made of obsidian and rune carved. So I was able to, you know, as a part of what he was doing to stop and to get his bearings, he was able to try to understand the runes as to as to what they meant. And then we could have a discussion and he rolled some inside checks and arcana checks about these are basically runes that have to do with binding and summoning. So a reason why he can't teleport out of here is these runes are, you know, are in essence are preventing. So he would constantly be trying to understand what it meant. And I gave him some insights based on some good roles he had is that, you know, if he got these artifacts that would, that in essence could deactivate these runes, then, then they would be able to escape the, uh, they would be able to escape the labyrinth. So it, it enabled a little, and the, I, I didn't have any of the stuff with the rooms written down at all. That was all as well. I like that. It gave, uh, it gave reference points, right? Mapping reference points. You know, you, you get to this point and it's like a mirror image. You can go back 10 feet or 20 feet and see these mirror, you know, these things being, being repeated, so you think you've arrived at the center of the labyrinth, and in essence, it's folded in on itself and stuff like that. So, yeah, it was good. It gave them some some reference points. You're back to the place where you saw the rune of the cow, for instance. Yeah, that works. Um, but yeah, I and I I like how you described it because a lot of times uh, we're all going to get behind the eight ball. It's like, oh shit, they're going. They're going off map here. They're going off script. What am I going to do? Da, 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 da. And in a lot of cases, you can go ahead and just go ahead and give them some kind of MacGuffin, for lack of a better term, or red herring, and let them run with it while you sit back and think, okay, how, how do I get them back on track? So I like yeah. that. Um, and, and make them earn it. Um, because... Uh, I think I think that when a player earns something, uh, it makes them feel better about the task rather than, oh, you go to the shop and yeah, there's a plus two sword you can buy. Oh, well, I'll buy it. Then it's like playing Warcraft. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay, you three know, fights, I get something, go on. To an extent, they have already earned their money. But... To an extent. I, I noticed early in the campaign, I gave away too many magic items at the start and, and there made him a little bit OP during those levels between like 15 to 17. 
uh, and you run into this vicious cycle in upper level 5e to where, you know, the fights that are at a deadly encounter are worth so much XP. It basically, they're leveling up every two fights. And that, that, can, that can get boring real quick. So I just stopped giving magic items. And it, uh, it really skews your campaign. Hard it does. Core. Now, it skews, so do, skews it. do you play specifically by the XP rules? Pretty much so, yeah. But although uh, after listening to some of what all you are were saying about how you can have, you know, milestones and different things like I'm thinking about, you know, modifying some of that, you know, to where, um, you know, based upon some of the conversations we've had here on this, uh, you know, between the roles, I may be changing that. But I had been doing CR, XP, award XP. After yeah. Yeah, they, I, I am a firm believer anymore in the milestone because that way, you know, not to be a dick about it, but you're going to do it my way if this is the kind of adventure you want. So if you want to go out, kill all the townspeople, demand five XP from each one of them, no. <laughs> that's, yeah. not, that, that's not how life works. The, yeah. the city guards are not XP portals, period. Well, right. Plus, plus it, it, it uh, allows you to create encounters in in the in the wilderness uh, like unplanned encounters that don't have to because you get to a certain level okay now you guys have to fight 30 hill giants in this one fight for this to even be a meaningful fight you can right. throw you can throw a little crap at them because they're not going to be they're not going to be butt hurt that they didn't get to level up after that Right. And in that case, when they go to that dungeon that they're headed to, uh, they're now two levels higher than you wrote it for. And it's like, right. Uh, right. the big bad guy is a kobold to them. And it's like, yeah, no, and, and which is, again, th th those are, th that's a great example, Frank, of, of having to, of having to improv something on the fly when you realize that, that for whatever reason that, you know, your party's side quests for lack of a better term, have now enabled them to level up <laughs> a little bit higher than the dungeon that they're about to go into was originally written for. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that is, that happened to me, that's happened to me, I don't know how many times. That's happened to me a lot of times. And Must while have it's, <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's easy to say, I'll just bump up their, um, I'll just bump up their XP. Uh, sorry, I'll just bump up their HP doesn't really work that way because you end up with uh, with players that have armor classes of 23 and these kobolds are only plus four to hit they're never going to hit them ever mm -hmm. no matter what they do they can't hit them they pass every save they you know it, it gets to be boring really really quickly so there are plenty of instances to where a dm is going to have to draw upon those improv skills there's no doubt about it Worst case scenario, you can always use nature against them. Oh, the kobolds, eh, they've uh, taken ale casks and shoved them in holes in the side of the crevasse you're going in, and they're going to light it. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> you better start running, and you better be making your saves. Otherwise, you're right. going to an early grave. Yeah. Now, yeah. now, Frank, and you too, Scott, but for specifically Frank, now uh, – do you find yourself in situations where, and again, I'm not, I'm not talking about the typical, yeah, okay, they've gotten into a tavern and now they're not doing anything. Now they're just fucking Adrian's out, right? marble. <laughs> well, I, yeah, but I'm talking about fun. specifically <laughs> how, like, like uh, how would you diffuse a situation where, where you're starting to get frustrated because that they're that, that no one really is picking up what's supposed to be happening Good you, you can you can do godlike intervention but i don't like using that because then it's okay the dm's just gonna you know what fuck it we'll just waste our time and the dm will finally tell us uh i usually make them do a side quest is uh the easiest way for me case in point the campaign when Kyle couldn't make it and you guys wandered into the tomb. Okay. What am I going to do with three of the four instead of making Kyle invisible uh, and just seeping off 
with the rest of them, which the campaign is, is milestone. So I do have that option. So what I wanted to do was I needed to get, in my opinion, magic items in your hands because I like at fourth level, everybody should have something really cool. You know, it makes for a little bit more entertainment rather than I'm using the same damn ax I had when I was new, this blows. Uh, so I thought, okay, how do we get it? Ernie really wanted the Pegasi. I mean, he, he, could, he wanted it so bad he could taste it. But I knew if I threw something, in this case a tomb, just right off the beaten path and just kind of describe, not describe, blah, 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 that oh, right in you go. And all three of you took it. And then what almost backfired was Dark Mantles, which are CR half they're 100 those, xp those things are always always the shit out of you guys and i'm like oh i can't kill him in a tomb that i didn't write um, <laughs> and they, they did you guys nearly freaking died on me and i'm like uh, campaign's over <laughs> I, was, I was gonna say i think i was the only one that wasn't getting the shit kicked out of me and i would have left him oh yeah ernie and chris just took a beating and i'm like well and, and it was it's like the six Koatoa at Torgal Manor. There's yeah. no way six Koatoa should be standing up to six level PCs. There's no way. No, and you no, guys they could not roll to save your ass. And all of a sudden, this not even easy encounter is starting to look a little bit hard. Um, now, in some cases, I will have them retreat. If they can't figure it out, you know what? You go down the tunnel, but it's covered in stone. Something has happened here. There's a debris pile. You're going to have to go back. Okay, well, why, what did we miss? Did we miss something? Is this a natural occurrence? Pushing the PCs back allows them to regroup, rethink, compare notes, and try and figure out if they did something wrong or if the DM has just said, Nice try, but the actual path is this way. Uh, so giving them time to reflect almost, almost always works. Uh, but if it is just too distracting, case in point, years ago, the group was going through a cave system, and I, I don't know, I moderately described a water feature. It was irrelevant. It was just, there's a stone depression here, water drips, it partially collects, blah, blah, blah. They spent forever on it. And I'm like, it's a water feature. There's nothing here. You know, where does the water go? Fuck, I don't know. It drains slowly out the bottom. Let's investigate that. This is what I'm telling you. In game, DM, the god says, there's nothing here. Let's send a fire bolt into it. <laughs> and they, I, they, they, I, I'm not shitting you. I think they wasted an hour on it, just fucking around with it. And by the end of it, I'm like, I, yeah, I, I, I have nothing. I have nothing to go with because they knew the direction they were supposed to go, but they were just so distracted <coughs> that I had given three sentences on an innocuous item that, well, he, he said stuff. He said stuff. There's something here. No, nothing, nothing. No magic, nothing. No healing. Move on. It's like uh, it's like uh, you go into a room, you see an obelisk in the center. Oh, <laughs> I you have my attention, sir. Uh, <laughs> well, well, even, even that particular instance that you're referring to it, it, again is a, another good a way to bring flavor into your into your right. Uh, it world is creation because. I think I even paid homage to that in our map creation episode. Right, right, right. That sometimes those those are almost just like understood areas to where the DM should feel free to just kind of go with it a little bit, you know. And and there, when we were talking earlier, as you can see, map features that are kind of, um, you know, lend themselves to this. And I want to say I took one of the uh, one of the. Um, um, things that we were talking about maps in some of our other sessions and how you can do some different things with them, how they, how they can end up telling their own story. I ran, um, I ran um, over the weekend 
um, C2 um, Ghost Tower of Inverness, just just with a bunch of friends. Uh, we ran it in one in uh, in you know first edition, and there are all these little areas, a big you know areas on the map that are just nothing there. And I decided instead of rolling for random encounters, I'm going to say these little you know nondescript rooms that you open up there's nothing there and there's no description that's where i'm going to roll those locations are where i'm going to roll for wondering for random encounters and some of them panned out that they were just storerooms and i just said they're just storerooms reeking of old must and mildew one of them had an ogre magi and the way i described it is that this one had you know bolts on the outside so and one of them picked up and said so this one is trying to keep something locked up i said that's right. This one is trying to keep something locked up. I and don't know. Is it? Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I would still say. I, I wouldn't even give them that concession. Yeah, well, I mean, yes. Yeah, so well, it's possible. There, there's true. And you hear, you know, well, let's 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 check it. You know, let's let's listen at the door. Okay, roll. And one of them's a thief, so they roll, you know, uh, you know, listen, uh, do a listen check. And uh, only had like a 26% chance, but rolled a 10. Uh, so, you know, they heard heavy breathing and the rattling of chains and stuff like that. So it was, it was great, but, but that was inspired by looking at the map and trying to see where are the areas that I can improv, where are the areas I can interject some creativity that's not just inside the written module. And I agree. You had mentioned earlier that 5e doesn't do a lot of that. And yeah. you, you and I both grew up on the old school. And that's one of the things I miss because one of the best parts about the random encounters was use it, don't use it. It's entirely up to you. So entirely if they're you. floundering, maybe you kill the ogre magi, maybe it has a map in its pocket, and maybe that's why it's in trouble. And oh, okay, now whew, let's take the door on the right. Let's get back on track, boys and girls. Right. right. Exactly. Uh, well, and, and those I, are I, aids. I would still say, what does it matter if that's written or not? Or, or are you just saying that it would be nice to have something a little bit more structured for beginners to draw on? It, it's already prepared, so it doesn't take too much thought. Now, right. back then, and I'm sure Scott still does, we had the monster manual memorized. I am right. nowhere close to having 5e shit memorized. But back in the day... It didn't matter. I'll tell you exactly how many hit points a dryad has, and I'll tell you what it does. It, it doesn't matter because it's bam, bam, bam. Now, uh, I would consider myself a, an intermediate DM in 5e. So it's like, okay, well, I know it used to do this shit, and every once in a while I'll throw a creature in there, and you guys will flip open the monster manual and go, hey, that's not what it does. Tough shit. That's what it does today. <laughs> Guess what? Uh, and that is something I I've, I've noticed myself being more reluctant to do in during during game when I'm when I'm playing now it, because of that. Because I'm like, it doesn't really matter if I if unless it's specifically something that we would have encountered enough before that I would know what it can do. I I I, I don't think that that's something that I should be doing anyways. Yeah, whenever I see a, a player open up the monster manual and go, hey, this thing's resistant to lightning and stuff like that. Oh, not this one. <laughs> oh, this one's really, uh, uh, let, let's get the rust monster out. Oh, this one's immune to rust. It's a fucking iron golem. How's it immune to rust? Oh, well, this is the, the Frank monster manual, bitch. <laughs> Stop reading ahead. Uh, I, I, I had that happen to me once where I'm like, they're, they're, they're fighting a lich and, you know, I cast, you know, uh, like power word kill, time stop and the like, but, but, but it only has one ninth level spell slot. I'm like, really? The, that one in the book does. That, <laughs> that one has one ninth level spell slot. This is his uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, mine I, has mine has as many as I want him to. Well, that's not fair. Well, you know, it's it kind of oh, is. <laughs> there ain't no fair. I don't think the, the word fair even. I think it might it might appear once or twice in the original players. And, and, I, and I'm not I, trying I, to. I, and I'm not I, trying I to be a dick at all was, about it. Describing a rural celebration. Say that again. <laughs> it, I think it does. It was describing a rural celebration. As a fair, yeah, as a ren fest, a ren fest is going on, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, and those are just some of the tips and tricks that you pick up by getting getting stuck in a corner is the is right. the best way. It's just like if you want to learn how to take something 
put something together, learn to take it apart <laughs> and realize, oop, <laughs> I have made a serious mistake. Well, well and very, very first thing out of the gate a couple of weeks ago. Okay. No, there's no way. I'm like, yeah, eight rock rubs. Sure. I'm like, oh no, I that's that there's no way in hell I can. I'm like, okay, no, let's have. I we love those rock grubs though. Yeah. I, I love the rock grubs. Those were, those were so cool. I really, really liked those rock grubs. Oh, they, they messed with those guys unmercifully. But again, you thinking on the fly is exactly what improv is based on. You know, oh shit, these guys are going to die in 10 Real minutes. Real quick. Uh, right. Just, ha I, I, just half of the reason why I know that is because they all started whining like bitches, but yeah. <laughs> oh, Carol's <laughs> like, how many points? 48. <laughs> it's like, well, I can watch a football game here in a few minutes because <laughs> this thing is over. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and you know, part of improv is just making shit up on the fly. And it doesn't matter if, well, the book says, great, you know what? Here's a pen. Change it in your book because that's not how it's going to be today. Yeah, no, uh, and that, that so or, no fire isn't going to kill these things. It's going to make them burrow into you. Like, yeah, that, that, that's how that works. That, yeah, I, yeah. they're fire eating rot grubs today, bitch. What's your book say about that? <laughs> uh, but yeah, and, and, that's, and, and it's not to be overly adversarial. Uh, it's just that. I think that that uh, that whenever you do have players that that you know tend to rely upon the rules a little bit, maybe too much. And I don't. I'm, so I'm not saying. I, mean, I, would say, I would say in a metagame way. Yes, exactly. In a metagame way. Oh, that monster doesn't have that many spell slots, or oh, that thing. You know, that's where you. I think as a DM, and I'll, I will make this make this opinion. I think a DM needs to push back. Mm -hmm. Saying. I understand that that within the framework of certain constructs, this is how this NPC is typically created. However, not every goblin has eight hit points. Okay, you do have levels, and this is a framework of how this works out. And um, um, you know, some creatures have legendary actions, and some do not. Some can do this, and some can't. You know that that's just the way that is. I'm sorry if that's what you run into in the past, but this NPC in this situation right now has 15 ninth level spell slots. Well, well and, 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 and to even say that what you're saying now and how you were saying that the rules are your friends a half hour ago don't necessarily conflict each other. Correct. Because, yes, if you're going to take the, a spell as written for the rules, that's because when the player is, when the character is learning that, they are fully aware of its capabilities or it has it been explained to them to, to the extent that they would know that. Right. Yeah. About the only thing I would add on that is, especially for new DMs, it is not you against the players ever. Right. That, Correct. This is not Correct. an adversarial game at all. And as long as you have a DM that you trust enough that, okay, he's not going to kill me if I'm doing my best or I'm trying real hard. He will kill me if I light the match or walk down the oil-covered staircase. Which after, is just after you're like, like, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure you want to do that shit? And you do it anyway, and you slip and you fall, and the orc or whatever sets you on fire, you're going to get that damage. But I'm not going to – I always say, the dice or your friends are going to kill you, one of those two. I am not going to kill you. Um, well, right. well, and, he, and even when when uh, the new the new guy Matt when he died, I, I was I was I'm like no 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 I, I'm I'm trying to I'm, 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 I'm just trying to I'm just trying to shorthand what's what's happening. Like in the meantime, you would have had time to speak between that. I'm not you're not mm -hmm. you don't have to eat that after that after that after that. Like if there's an issue, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to continue. Yeah, but you cannot always save them either. So it oh, is yeah. a very fine line that you walk because right. if you do something stupid, uh, there are there should be consequences. There aren't many consequences in the campaign game. <laughs> but no, 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 I would agree. There aren't. Yeah, but last <laughs> week really had them nervous. Uh, Not me. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, you keep wandering off by yourself. I think you're going to learn not to do that. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, folks, that's, it's that's uh, the only reason I took Dimension Door. <laughs> it's 10 after. Let's go ahead and do final thoughts. Uh, th we can talk to you for a week on this topic and still only scratch the surface. Uh, I started with Scott. We'll start with Blake. Blake, final thoughts. Uh, I hope uh, it is God. This is the best orgasm I've ever had. I hope it doesn't end. I would like for that. To, I would like for that to be my final thought. Okay, uh, Scott. Regulators. Oh, oh the, 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 the filter. Turn the filter. Turn the filter on. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't know how I did that. Uh, <laughs> I really thought, don't. I it, it, if, if you've ever seen Young Guns, folks, he had an audio filter on, and it was dead on Emilio Estevez, just dead on. He, sound, he sounded like a dog having coitus with an obese woman. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know how I did that last time. It was just a filter that came on, and I don't know how. What kind of zoo are you hanging out at? Uh, final he, thoughts. He is in Mexico, uh, isn't he? No, no, no. I'm making mistake. mistakes, but you know. It, it, it does not hurt to make mistakes as long as you can fix them. Uh, feel free to make mistakes. As a DM, you're out there on the edge. Live on the edge. Accept the fact that you're going to screw up. I do. He does. He does. We all do. Don't sweat it. Move on and go and, and just get better at it. Uh, and it's a group experience. It is. You're, you guys, it is a group storytell. Collective and, storytelling. Yep. Uh, follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at the YouTube archive. Buy our shit if you want. Eh, if you don't, who cares? Uh, if you want to play in a one-shot this Saturday, go up against a goblin pirate. That should be interesting. Uh, let us know at M Hobo Inc. Then say, hey, I can play for a couple hours, and I can't do any worse than uh, your current cast. And I will say, True. no, you cannot. <laughs> not do any worse. Not do any worse. Can't do any better. So, uh, But for all of us here at Murder Hobo Inc., uh, episode 50 of Between the Rolls went rather well, as it always does. Uh, thank you to these two. Thank you to the rest of our cast. And we will catch you on Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern with the one shot. Central. Let's do the wave. Regulators! Regulators!